What's going on, game players? What is happening? I want to welcome you guys to Listener Feedback, episode number 19. And in this week's episode, we have the show starring Mr. Crimson Phoenix, who has written in yet again for another week. I appreciate that, brother. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being in the building. It is fantastic to hear from you on a weekly basis. We also have Cody Clark, who is the OOG, who has been rocking with your guy for many, many years. Years. It is really appreciated to hear you right then again. And uh, man, it's always great to listen to your, your, your points. Well, I should say, read your points, your points of view. And I'm sure you had quite a bit to say this week because this is a lengthy email that you sent me, good brother. I can't wait to get into it. And finally, we have making his return Club Box Gaming. Thank you, brother, for being in the circle. Thank you for writing in again as well. It's always great to have you here. And uh, thank you, guys, because I got to give y'all a round of applause, man. Because if it wasn't for y'all, this episode would not exist. So thank you guys again for writing in. On top of you guys writing in, you know how we do it, man. We're going to cover just a few smaller gaming topics along the way. And uh, yeah, that's how we're going to rock out, man. So you, the listener, listening right now, just want to let you guys know I want to send you an invite, an invite to next week's show. Of listener feedback. If you want to chime in, if you have some thoughts and opinions that you would like to be heard, you can do it two different ways. You can either email the show, and the email address is simply the analog circle podcast at gmail.com, or you can call the show. That's right, and really let your voice be heard by calling in at 443. 443- 2169934. Now, with that being said, we are going to get into Crimson Phoenix's email, which is titled Just Want to Share. He says, It finally happened. I was able to get my very own Series X. Whoa! Whoa, man, that's a rare item right there, brother. Congratulations, Crimson Phoenix, on that. Now, let me continue with your email here, brother. He says, I'll tell you how. Oh, yes, school me. Please school me. He says, you you see, I'm old school. Told myself that I'll never do Facebook or Twitter. Well, right now, it's impossible not to, as Twitter was the only way I was going to get one. So get your pens, (laughs) get your pens or your crayons, because these guys will help you get a Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, or GPU. He says, step one, hopefully y'all got your pens, your paper, you know, like the man said, your Crayolas out to go ahead and take this information down. So here it is. This is step one. Go ahead and get your notes ready. He says, get Twitter app. That's step one. Now, step two, he says, create account. Step three, Turn on notifications in the app and in your phone settings. I hope y'all are jotting this down. Step four, he says, follow Wario64. Man, matter of fact, I do follow that guy. What? Wario64 and D-Batch. I I know him. I don't follow D-Batch, but I know that brother. Matter of fact, I mean, I don't know him, know him, but I think he's over there with Dealer and... Those guys over on the uh, the podcast that they do, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know about D-Batch. He seems like a cool dude, man. He says, uh, step five, check your phone every time you hear your Twitter notifications. Step six, and we're getting close to the end here. He says, follow the post-it links on your desired purchase. Then he puts in parentheses. Make sure you have an account and are signed in with the retailer. 
And he says, step seven, which is the final step. Hopefully you guys been jotting. He says, step seven, wait for the doorbell. Last step, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Man, let me tell you. Oh, he says, um, let me finish up. He says, hope that helps you and anyone else still waiting to get one. Crimson Phoenix, brother A, man. I got I to gotta clap it up for you again, man. Round of applause to you, brother. Congratulations on the purchase. I know you're having a ball with it. I'm, man, brother, I'm trying to get one. I'm going to follow these steps as well. Hopefully, I will be as lucky and fortunate as you. This is so awesome. Man. Hey, Crimson, let me know, brother, if you did this or not. Two things. What was the first game that you popped into the Series X? And the second question I have for you, brother, is what backwards compatible game did you play that really made you say, wow, this is different. This is this is a changer. You know, it looks totally different, plays different. You know, the, the resolution is looking better. The frame rate is better. It feels better. Let me know that, Crimson Phoenix. I'm really interested in knowing what were those two games that you started with as far as, like, the first game you played and then the first backwards compatible game. Crimson it is always fantastic to hear from you, brother. I truly thank you for writing in and sharing this awesome news, man. I'm hoping it'll be me soon. I am really, really hoping, man. I'm trying to get, I'm going to tell you though, Crimson, I'm going to have to get that PS5, baby. I got to get that one first, brother, because, um, man, the games that they have, I'm just so excited, but just still, Xbox Series X, it has some great games as well. The backwards compatibility, it's a fantastic console. I can't wait to get that one either, brother. And I, and just like you said, these steps, they won't just work for the Series X, but also for a GPU and for a PlayStation 5, brother. Thank you for the awesome, awesome step-by-step -step guide that you have given us this week. It is really, really appreciated, and I look forward, brother, to hearing from you next week to let me know what those two games were, brother. Thank you again. It is so, so appreciated. Now... As we move on from good brother Crimson Phoenix's email, I want to drop just a little bit of gaming news. Just, 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 just a little bit that happened this week. Now, Bethesda and id Software announced today via trailer that Doom 3 is coming to PSVR on March 29th and will include the Resurrection of Evil and the Lost Mission DLC, which in total, that's going to add around an additional, what was it, like 20 levels to the game. Now, unfortunately, no price point was announced, but uh, yeah, that's what we have right now. And it doesn't look like to be completely fair here. It doesn't look like they've done a lot of work with the textures. I mean, Doom 3, you're pretty much going to get what that game was. But the VR experience of it all, man. Listen, man, y'all know my VR is in the, in the doggone box. I haven't opened it up yet. But this right here, golly, it looks good, man. It looks really good. Matter of fact, not just Doom 3 was announced today, also, do me a favor. Now, this game looked really good. Check out, it's this game called Fract. This coming this summer is spelled F-R-A-C-K-E-D. Fract. That's also coming out on the PSVR. And uh, it's coming out this summer. Now, that game looks so Good, man. It it kind of reminds me of, uh, what was it, Blood and Truth uh, from a, uh, what was it, about a year, year and a half ago or so that was on PSVR. It's a little more cartoony. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like super cartoony, but I guess the art style, if I had to just thinking of it off of off of the top of my brain just off the cuff i would say maybe similar to death loop a little bit with the art style but it looks so fluid man when he was hopping over cover and shooting and one scene he was skiing it really looked like you were skiing man because whoever was playing it and of course they're, they're gonna show it in its best light 
possible. I know that. But whoever was playing as he was skiing and he was, you know, pushing himself along with the skis, it looked like, man, it looked like you were really skiing, brother. I mean, you got to check out the trailer. To me, that was way more impressive than Doom 3. It looks more fluid, whole lot of action. Man, check, man, just check it out, man. Check it the heck out. It looks good. Looks really, really good. Matter of fact, now I didn't write these down. I, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. But uh, I believe, and y'all know my memory is bad. I got a horrible memory. It's shot. But I believe they announced four other games today. I think in total it was six. So you guys will have to look up the other four if you're interested and this is also awesome news, too, because we know that that PSVR 2 is coming. They already made the announcement. It is underway. It is happening right now as we speak. So hopefully these games that we're seeing now, these six. Now, I don't know how well the other four games look. I don't even know what they are. But hopefully these games will be back with compatible. We'll get that better frame rate, that better resolution, maybe better uh, tracking to make the game feel better. You never know. But I have to give, got to give Sony some applause here, too, man. Man, because who in the world thought that Sony was going to support the PlayStation VR for all of these years? We have seen Sony so many times. If something isn't working, if it's not taking off, and I mean doing fantastic fantastic numbers they get off of it and leave it happened to the psp and it happened to uh the playstation vita the the support it slowly went away and it was over in no time but just the fact that they have stuck with playstation vr this long that is to be Man, you got to applaud that, man. PlayStation, they didn't jump ship on it. They they stayed 10 toes down. They keep on they keep on supporting it. And uh these games, they look really good. At least Doom 3 and and like I said, uh uh Fract. Fract looks great, man. And then you talk about Blood and Truth. They got some good games on the on the doggone uh uh, uh, PSVR, Moss was another one, uh, Astrobot was another one, it got some joints, man, so I gotta give Sony a lot of credit for that, man, sticking in there and doing what they do, but, uh, moving on, moving on into the next email here, and we have up next to the plate, let's see if he hits a home run, we got the OG, Cody Clark. Now, the title of his email is, oh, 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 brother. Oh, you are responding to my question uh, from uh, on Sunday show. Okay, now this brother titled this. I don't know if I'm in trouble or what. He said, acquire this. God, dog, Cody, what's on your mind this week? He says, does Xbox need more studios? Does EA, does Ubisoft? Does Blizz act? What about Tencent or any of a dozen other financial investment firms that don't even make games and just want something to poop out mobile? <laughs> mobile button click apps that gobble credit cards. Yeah, let me tell you something, man. Tencent, they are. Yeah, those guys are a conglomerate, man. Those jokers own a little bit of everything in gaming but let me finish up with your email here brother well let me continue he says people have stated xbox has no exclusives and it's got no reason to upgrade to the new xbox series system you're absolutely right he says then they say that the game pass is one of the better slash more exciting values and features of the new generation yeah i've heard that too i've heard the game pass matter of fact i think that uh aaron greenberg he had now, I didn't read the story, Cody. I'm going to be honest with you, but uh, I think it was over on Kotaku. The guy had said that he had jumped from PS5 to Xbox Series X, and who knows? Maybe that had something to do with it. Um, Game Pass seems to be doing quite well for some, but let me finish with your email, brother. Um, He says, now, Netflix is pretty darn amazing and has really come into its own. But then Disney with, like, man, what? What? 
Seems like 75% of all the IPs in the world shows up and really starts to eat Netflix's lunch in just over a year. Yeah, Disney has done some damage. Now, now I don't keep up with the with the streaming numbers or, or how many subs that these guys get, Cody, but yeah, Disney Plus is absolutely on fire. Everybody's talking about that show, uh, Wanda... I don't know. Let me wand division or something, I think. Uh, but let me continue, brother. He says, so if people want Xbox to have crazy, massive, exclusive AAA and AA games, as well as tons, as well as tons of games flooding Game Pass and lots of power to have a super diverse catalog of games that we can play on Xbox, PC, tablets, and cell phones, they need groups and IPs to put put to put on them okay and that's the th- well let me finish up your email brother he, he says so do they need more studios no but people will say they need exclusivity huge diverse games and as they point out they are looking at google and amazon as their rob man we gonna talk to you about that brother um not nintendo or sony then yes they have to do this. I don't like the idea. <sighs> hey, Microsoft, how about we bring back Team Dakota? <laughs> Rest in peace, Project Spark. Man, Cody, thank you for this email, brother. It is appreciated, man. I always love and respect your opinions, brother. We don't always agree, but we always respect each other's opinion, man. And it's always great to hear from you. You always have something to say. Very interesting. And and I, I thank you for that, brother. Now, with this, I'll say, man, uh... Nah, brother, they, I, I, like you said, no, they don't. And, and, and it's true. They have so many, 23 studios, Cody, 23, brother. Let me, let me read something that you, you said here. Um, you said if, so if people want Xbox to have crazy, massive, exclusive AAA and AA games, as well as tons of games flooding Game Pass and lots of, power to have a super diverse of catalog of games that we that wasn't the one i wanted to read god dog and, and, and anyway this this is what i'm saying brother you know yeah they were talking about that you know microsoft said that google and amazon are their competition right now google is drowning brother google is drowning right now man even their own team can't even fix the game that they made because they've been dismantled, brother. They dismantled. They are no longer over at Google. They're not working for Stadia. Matter of fact, it was said earlier this week, and I can't, don't quote me on it, but they said that Stadia, Google spent millions upon millions of dollars to get games like Red Dead Redemption 2, and it has not worked out for them. So, so Microsoft, they have... I mean, when, when when we heard word, Cody, that when Microsoft had bought, well, of course, we know the deal hasn't gone through yet, but very, very soon, once it's official, um, you know, that Microsoft is going to own uh, Bethesda slash, well, Zenimax slash Bethesda uh, games, it was that rumor going around that they said, that's it. Google said, that's it. We're out. We're out. We can't handle this. That is too much. That's too high. That's too much money. We're not spending that. So we're going to just kind of bail, dismantle our team. As crazy as that sounds, that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. But the point of me bringing that up, Cody, is they're not competition right now. I understand in other areas, yes. I mean, Google, Microsoft, yeah, I mean, I understand um, that. But as far as gaming goes, man, not right now, brother. And, of course, you got to keep your eye on your rivals. You don't want it to be a... A Coca-Cola slash Pepsi situation where Pepsi was in second place and Coca-Cola got comfortable and all of a sudden they could have bought Pepsi, but they said, ah, man, who cares? They're, they're, they're nothing. And all of a sudden they run a neck and neck. So you got to keep your eye on, you know, who's coming up, who's in your sector, who's, you know, doing the same thing you're doing. But right now, I mean, Google is... They're, nah, nah, they're, they're, they're not a threat at the moment. Not saying they can't be. But Google and Amazon, 
Not right now, brother, you know, but getting back on track, I still, you know, think that 23 Studios is more than enough. It's more than enough diversity that can come out of these different studios, having Coalition, having Ninja Theory, having uh, Playground Games, having, um, uh, man, just the countless others man i can't remember them all cody you you know how i am brother you know i just think that that's enough then you got bethesda jumping on board as well yeah man they just i think they they should just chill man with that many studios it is no way possible that they should be starving that the xbox fan base once they start clicking on all cylinders should ever be starved for triple a and double a games it should be on i mean nothing is impossible and you can't speak in absolutes i get that but just the sheer number of studios that these guys are gonna own it shouldn't be a reason why they should be lacking in one area versus the other you know because they, they're gonna have hopefully the talent is going to be there. I mean, there's certain studios, like I talked about before, that I, I don't know. Like Compulsion Games, heesh, they, they, they don't really jump out as a AAA developer to me after their first outing that we saw. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But then you have the Shining Stars on the squad like the coalition hopefully they let them work on something different and you have um like i say ninja theory that's my ace in a hole man if all of the other studios are in question to me ninja theory is the only studio that is solid if everything if everybody else is in question playground games what they're gonna do with fable i will always say that i have the most faith in ninja theory but cody we can agree to disagree, brother. I, I know that you think they need more to make sure that the games continue to come out, that they continue to flood. I know you said that no, they don't, but people will say they need exclusivity, huge, diverse games in it. And as they point out, they're looking. Yeah, I'm about to read it all over again. Cody, I'm super long winded with your email, brother, but I appreciated it, man. It's always great to hear from you, brother. Like I said, you've been rocking with me, man, for many, many, many years. And I thank you, brother. I thank you for the support. I thank you for your, uh, your emails, sharing your thoughts, sharing your opinions. It really, really means a ton to me brother and it never gets old it never gets old hearing from you brother i think i think man we've been rocking out what close to five years right now so it's it's, it's always great man to just hear from you brother and i truly appreciate you and once again thank you so much for your support good brother now let me see what what else do we have here when it comes to gaming news oh Speaking of Microsoft, <laughs> now, 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 this was not planned. I'm telling you, I promise you it wasn't planned. But the second thing that I wrote down is, uh, it looks like Microsoft is upgrading their xCloud streaming service. Now, this is actually uh, coming from Windows Central. Windows Central is reporting that Microsoft is currently testing an upgraded back end for xCloud that swaps out aging Xbox One era hardware for the newer Series X and S, the X and S. And uh, what this does is essentially, this is, Man, it's genius, but it scares me a little bit. Um, essentially, um, it upgrades you to the newer hardware without you having to spend money for the latest console tech. So if you're over on xCloud and you, uh, let's say that Xbox series, I don't know, well, a whole nother Xbox is, um, uh, released. If you're on xCloud, they're going to slow, slowly shift out the old and bring in the new tech. And you never have to spend an extra dime to have that happen. That's very interesting. And it scares me because me, I'm old, brother. I'm 42 years old. I'm an older gamer. I love the hardware. That's what I want. And I'm not oblivious. I'll, I'll say this again. I'm not oblivious to the fact that cloud, it is eventually, that's where they're trying to go. 
Hopefully it doesn't get there anytime soon, but we all know that eventually that's going to happen. I mean, it was at a point where not a lot of people believed that digital game sales would catch on and be a thing. And it started in the 360 era, and here we are in the Xbox Series X and PS5 era, and it's pretty much running neck and neck with uh, physical, sometimes outperforming uh, uh, the, the, the physical copies. So same thing with the cloud. I know it's coming. I know it's looming among us. Uh, no pun intended on that, but um, I'm, I understand that it will happen eventually, but... Getting back on track, uh, the other thing is another new feature you can take advantage of soon will be the resolution bump for the service, which will go from 720p to 1080p. Now, the service will be available on PCs through a web app, and you'll be able to also download it on iPhones, iPads, uh, using the same tech, and it will also work with most Android devices. Very, very interesting. Ah, anyway, we're going to move on into looks like our final email for the week. And it's coming from Glove Box Gaming. Shout out to this brother. Now he says, now the question, nah, golly, I, I, I just leaked it. I leaked it early. Uh, the title of his email is this week's question. He says, yo, Keon, what's up, my good brother, man? I'm hanging in there, man. I maintain it. Maintain it. He says, man, when you ask the question of the week, I feel like you tapped into my brain. I was speaking, and oh man, and was speaking the truth. Oh, shucks, thank you, brother. He says, no, Microsoft doesn't need any more dang studios. <laughs> They need to make some stinking games. I agree, brother. I wholeheartedly agree. He says, I mean, I love my Series X, but I am waiting to see what's behind the curtain. Jeez. Okay, my brother. Just wanted to add my two cents and tell you I love the show. Thank you, brother. Um, And keep up the great work you are doing. Talk to you soon. Oh, yeah. By the way, open that PSVR. Jeez. <laughs> I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much, Glove Box Gaming. If you guys aren't aware, Glove Box Gaming, he actually has a YouTube channel. It's a great YouTube channel. Go over there, sub to the Good Brothers channel. He has some great content over there. And he always does these fire giveaways, man. And I'm not saying, like I said before, don't just subscribe to get the, you know, get, you know, become a winner and, you know, get the, the great things that he gives away, but he has some very, very good information. I love his takes and I, he's a real good brother. Um, thank you though. Uh, glove box gaming for, um, writing, writing in this week. I'm all tongue tied as usual, but yeah, I agree with you, man. That's what it's about. All we need, all we need as gamers, just give us the games. That's all we need, right, Cody? That's all we need, brother, is the games. All of these studios soon to have, soon to have, Bethesda under your umbrella. You have a full arsenal in your hands. You have a full army of gaming studios under your wings. Release those jokers. Let them do what they do. That's all we need. Once those games start coming, Cody, I'm telling you, brother. Once the games start coming, all of that Xbox has no games. Xbox has no exclusives. It will, I mean, it's never going to totally quiet down. I mean, we all know this, you know what I mean? But it'll, it'll at least take the volume level down because us as gamers, glove box gaming, you know, this brother, all we are interested in at the end of the day, it's all about the games, brother. What am I playing on my console? And what is the quality level? I mean, here's, here's the deal. PlayStation, not every game 
knocks it out the park that PlayStation does. They have some duds in there. They have some duds that don't really hit the mark. I mean, golly, I don't think anybody would disagree that Days Gone was not one of those shining stars in their stable. Yeah, it did okay, but, eh, you know, they don't really talk about that game too much. But for every Days Gone that you get from PlayStation, you also get a Last of Us Part Two. You get a Ghost of Tsushima. You get a Ratchet and Clank. You know, you get a Spider-Man, you get a God of War, you get a Horizon Zero Dawn. It's like it's so many fantastic games that you get versus the duds that the duds don't really seem as bad because pretty much all PlayStation is doing is masking that problem. They're like, okay, That one isn't hitting too well, but that's all right, because we got this one coming out, this one coming out, and that one coming out. And that just pretty much gets buried to the the bottom of the pile from all of the great gaming experiences that we get. And that's the problem with Microsoft right now. Microsoft doesn't have that at the moment, where, yes, Gears Hivebuster is one of the best games I have played. And, I mean, not recent memory, but recently i mean ori and the will of the wisp golly y'all know i love that game fantastic game but it's just not on the level of a god of war or a spider-man it's just not there and what microsoft needs to do is just start making those triple a games that really really hit you you know and and, and games that are up for a goatee A game of the year. When's the last time we have seen a third person or a first person or let's just say a campaign based game from Microsoft be put up for game of the year? Sony has been, I think they broke a record, I think, for having so many game of the year contenders or winners that they broke a record. And that at the end of the day, that is the difference at the moment. Between Sony and Microsoft, Sony is bringing those AAA Game of the Year contenders and Microsoft at the moment, they are just making okay to good games and that has to change. That's all we need. Once Microsoft starts clicking on all cylinders, I'm telling you that the talk will completely, well, it's not going to completely change, but like I said, the volume will be turned down. Let me tell you, man, Glovebox, once again, brother, it's fantastic to hear from you. I went off on a tangent there a little bit. My my apologies, brother, but I am am in wholehearted agreement with you, my good brother, um, about your comments, man. Please continue to write in. It's fantastic to hear from you. I enjoy your videos. I enjoy your content, brother. You definitely keep going as well. Um, thank you for the support. And uh, yeah, man, hopefully I will be able to read off another one of your emails, man. And uh, yeah, just keep writing in. It is definitely, definitely appreciated, my good brother. Now, um... Up next, and and this is pretty much going to be the end of the podcast for the most part, but I did want to run by, uh, run this by you guys. Just as a reminder, on March 31st, Nintendo will no longer be selling Super Mario Brothers 35. You'll not be able to get a game and watch Super Mario Brothers. Um, that was that handheld that they came out with, and Super Mario 3D All Stars will also be pulled from stores uh, physically and digitally. And I believe that uh, last year when uh, the um, Mario 3D All-Stars came out as well as the Game & Watch, which I was able to get my hands on. I was able to get one, both of them. I actually got Mario 3D All-Stars and the Game & Watch, which is cool because I have some of the original Game & Watches, the uh, tabletops. You know, I have Popeye, I have uh, Donkey Kong Jr., and I have Mario Cement Factory. So I have those three as well as 
a couple of other tabletops uh, in my collection. So I was glad to get that um the newer game and watch and seeing how that looks. I'm, I'm be honest, I didn't even open it, man. I just I just threw it in there with the rest of the stuff that I collect. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just happy to have it. But yeah, so just make sure that if you were interested in any of these items, make sure that you guys uh act fast because they're they're basically pulling a disney here you know they're going to be putting all of this stuff back into the uh i guess the the vault as it were and it's no telling when they'll be releasing it again so remember march 31st make sure that you get these items before they're gone or the prices go up so much because i'm starting to see that game and watch on ebay yeah, that joke is starting to creep up a little bit. I mean, you can still get one for 50 bucks, but some guys, they're selling it for 80 $85, I guess, because they know the time is coming. So if you want to get one, please act as soon as possible. But um, just on a side note, now this doesn't really have to do with gaming, but it kind of just reminds me that, man, we are living in the Jetsons era right now, minus the 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 uh, the cars, you know, the flying cars, but we're living in like a Jetson era, man. Because, um, like I said, it's not game related, but check out Microsoft's Mesh. This is thing called Microsoft Mesh, and it deals with holographic technology. Uh, they they said it will use um, Azure and the cloud, but what it basically does is it has, you know how you have Zoom right now and you have your little meetings or whatever and you can see each other. But with this, they're using the HoloLens too and you'll see like an actual, and of course, I know they're playing it up. I'm sure it's not going to perform 100% like they were presenting it. Once again, they try to show these things in the best light possible. But we know that some of this stuff, it is definitely smoke and mirrors. So, Definitely take it with a with a, with a mustard seed of truth, but the way they were showing it was um these two people they were interacting with each other they were face to face one person was using their avatar and they were actually like moving these virtual objects around the uh the table very very interesting man just check it out type it into YouTube it's called Microsoft Mesh and uh. It's very, very interesting. Now, I don't think this is for the regular average consumer. I'm pretty sure this is for businesses. I mean, we also have not seen HoloLens release, uh, you know, on the regular scale for the average consumer. So I'm sure that this will be something for businesses, but it's definitely a very, very interesting technology. Uh, well, guys, I guess that will uh, wrap it up for this week. Uh, matter of fact, oh, I think I got one more thing here. Hold on. Let me check. Let me check um, real quick just to make sure that. I, yeah, I did want to run this by you guys. I'm glad I looked. Uh, Vampire, the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. That project is good. Gosh, it is in dis. Array. I mean, quite a few people have been let go. Matter of fact, I'm going to read the quote here if I can find it. And this is from uh, GameSpot. Got to give those guys their credit. Um, okay, it was the, the, the CEO of the company. Um, his name is uh, Eba. Uh, I don't even, I'm not going to be able to pronounce this last name. It's spelled L J U N. G E R U D. I I can understand the Garad at the end, but the Jun Garad, I guess. Uh, well, anyway, he says uh, the hard decision was made to ensure the game lives up to the quality standards fans are expecting. And this is his quote. He said, "We have now chosen to postpone the release of the game further, and we will not be launching the game in 2021." Um, he says, "We have also decided that Hard Suit Labs will no longer." be leading the development of bloodlines 2 and we will have started a collaboration with a new studio partner to finish work on the game this has been a difficult decision but we are convinced that it is the right way forward to to do the game justice end of quote so 
Yeah, for anybody that was looking forward to Bloodlines 2, and we know that that was shown during the, uh, what was it, the May event, I believe, of Xbox or, you know, whatever it was close to the summer, their first show. And it looked pretty okay. It looked decent. It didn't look bad. I mean, you, you guys know that I really actually enjoyed that May event. I thought it showed a lot of promise and potential. And, uh, you know, this game was one of the ones that was shown. So if you were looking forward to this, ah, man, just, uh, yeah, you're going to be waiting for a minute. You are going to be waiting for quite a while because it looks like they're going through a major shift, um, collaborating with another team. People have been laid off. Um, it was this one woman named Anna, um, who she was heartbroken. Uh, she was in the narrative department, her and four other people lost their jobs along the way. So yeah, very, very sad situation. Um, when anybody loses their job, it's, it's really terrible. So, uh, just, just know that once again, this game is not coming out any time soon. Well, that will officially wrap this one up. Let's go ahead and put a little bow up on it because it's over. Now, once again, on Sunday, we will be back at it. A uh, couple of things to cover. I'm going to be honest. I don't have much written down at the moment, so I'm going to be working on it as the week goes on. But we will definitely be back Sunday. And once again, you the listener, this listener right now, thank you guys for being here. Thank you uh, to Crimson Phoenix again, Cody Clark, and Glovebox Gaming for writing in. It's really appreciated. And uh, yeah, we will be back at it Sunday. So until then, play some games and enjoy yourself.